shit, it's eight o'clock. <laughs> hey, everybody. This is Tasha with Prep For It and my lovely co host, Ms. Mouse Toes, over there. And for those that aren't subbed to her, please go check her out. Let's see who's out there. We've got Sandra Moody, Alley Cats, Prepared Life, Camp Fat, Pat and Family Compound, which is Gil, Trish Wiley from Wiley Living. Um, let's see, Gear Grad 19, and he asks, uh, what's the playlist name for the Prep For It Challenge, or have you made one? Um, I think it's just, uh, it, I haven't made a playlist, it's just one video, and let me make sure I tell you correctly. Uh, Pantry Food Challenge is what the name of the video is called, and it looks like that with the brown one there. Right there, where my finger's pointing. Pantry food champ or pan uh prepper's cooking. Prepper's cooking contest is what it says on the thumbnail, but it's pantry food challenge. Okay, so you gotta make a playlist. Well, that's the only one I have as far as that. Uh, yeah, well, and all you gotta do is type in in your search bar above hashtag prep for it food challenge, like Trish. Um typed right here let me show you prep for it food challenge and it will pull it up it can be cool. a part uppercase and or all lowercase it don't matter it'll pull it up okay and we also have yossi in the simple kitchen hey man and let's see camp pat and family compound which is gill and aiden and year good to see you aid and of course, my mouse toes. And Morgan is skipping this one tonight. She's dog tired, I think. Oh. So, so she's skipping tonight. She may, you never know with Morgan. Yeah. Hey, Suburban, Suburban Hillbilly. Think she's out there somewhere. Yes. Why am I? Oh, there it is. There's Suburban. Okay. And Huga Homestead. Good to see you. <clears throat> so, y'all, I have. Two full pages and a portion, a very tiny portion of a third page. Yep, there are three videos so far. Um, CB, um, I believe, did one. So um, she did, or no, 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 it was, um, it was, backwards. yeah, well, we did Backwoods Law, Camp Pat and Family Compound. I actually, I think he did it on the Gray Man. Um, prepping channel and then um, Ginger Ninja which she didn't do the right hashtag so but I knew I saw it but it was before I had put out exactly what hashtag to use so hi Uncle Al good to see you so all right we've got 10 in I hope y'all are hitting that like button I appreciate it if you have community tabs will you share this out to get more people in here I'd appreciate that good um <clears throat> So, tonight we're talking about emergency preparedness binders. Woohoo, real glamorous, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so fun, but it really is a very good and vital thing to do. Um, now, as far as choosing your binder, you want a good heavy duty one. You're putting important stuff in there. You want to make sure it's not just a cheapo one that's going to fall apart. Okay, um, but you want a good binder, I would say at least probably a three inch. Okay, um, I, I, three inches about right for all of the information if you added everything in there. Okay, um, to be on the safe side. Of course, you could acquire everything and then just see what size you need uh, once you lay it all out. Okay, um, you could, you know, get everything printed out, written down, what, however you want to do it. You can make this as complex or as easy as you want, as fancy or non-fancy as you want, okay? The point is, is that you need to have your emergency binder with your information so that you can just grab it and go. Some people call it a grab-and-go binder. Um, and so... Pick out your binder. Some people want like a bright red one so they know exactly and they can direct anybody to it in the house if they need to. It's on the shelf. It's the bright red binder. It's three inches wide. You know, whether it's a babysitter or whoever, you could direct, you know, tell them if there's ever an emergency, boom, there you go. 
Okay. Um, so it's real easy for people to grab. If for some reason an ambulance is, is needed or something like that, you could even have one of the ambulance workers grab that on the way out the door. Um, if, if you're the, the patient, uh, as long as you were conscious, you could have them grab it if they needed to. It could have all your medical history and stuff in it so that you're not um, bothered with, have, with having to deal with all of that while you're trying to get treatment. And it will help the doctors maybe figure out what's going on with you as well. Um, so the first thing I would say, hey, P2E, good to see you. Um, the first thing that I would say would be, and we discussed this a few, um, a few shows back, but talking about how it'd be handy to have a diagram of your home or business included on that diagram, I would say, uh, would be your shutoffs locations for your water, gas, electric, etc. Whether it's in your yard or not, your diagram could show your yard if you need to. Um, but you know, you need to know where all of those things are. You also need to be able to convey that to emergency personnel should the need arise. Another thing would be maps and evacuation routes. Like depending on what um, situation is going on uh, for your area, you may want to have several, you know, depending mm -hmm. on what kind of disaster it might be. Like if you know you've got a, a some kind of plant with chemicals in it to the north of you, you're not going to want to evacuate that way if something's going on at that plant, right? You're going to pick a different route. So having some local maps and some evacuation routes will really help, especially if you're in a very populated area. Um, hey, Kaylin, good to see you. Um, and that's a very good point, Tasha, to not count on GPS, okay? Oh, when everybody's yeah. trying to get out, if you have more than one route you can take, then, you know, if, if you can't, you can't even find a map in a gas station anymore. You know, there's no yeah. traditional gas. Station. Yeah. Of course, I have a big South Carolina atlas, um, yeah. but, you know, that that's a hard copy. And mm -hmm. that at least you could be following that along and go, okay, we don't want to go that way. We haven't been this way, but, you know, at least have the plan there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And this is also helpful. Like if you do have a babysitter come in, if you have somebody come in and watch your kids, you and your spouse, or you're out on an evening on the town or whatever, and something major happens, they need to know where to evacuate to with your child. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you need to go over that evacuation plan with them, you know, maybe not to the detailed degree that you would uh, family, but, you know, mm -hmm. you need to go over it with them. That is a great them. idea. Wow. Yeah. I didn't think of that because I don't have children, but that yeah. is a brilliant idea. Mary Beth, good to see you. Okay. Um, for different kinds of disasters, you may want an evacuation checklist put in there. OK, and you're going to put all this stuff in page protectors so that you don't have to worry about, you know, them getting damaged as easily. OK, but um, a checklist, whether it's a, you know, like say it's a hospital uh, checklist, like if you're going to the hospital, you can have a list, grab my medicine bucket, grab my hospital go bag or whatever it is that you're needing to have grab my insurance cards, grab my ID, things like that. Um, you know, you may want in your little kit some some things, some some money to have on hand for, um, you know, like the snack machine or whatever. If if somebody's going to be there with you and sitting with you, they're going to need something to sustain them. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so uh, maybe your content lists for your evacuation kits. Okay having a a, a a detailed list of what's in there that you can just quickly glance at is a lot easier um, than trying to dig through your bag again and try to find everything. Um, let's see. Your, your, also your um, list of your um, preps that are in your home and all of your other um, items that you have in your home. You want a list of those for insurance companies, 
um, in case of fire or tornado or a flood or something comes through, you need to have your uh, inventory of your home and your outbuildings. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, because you can mm -hmm. forget what you got out there. Hey, Dustin. Good to see you, King Poobah. Yeah, Alley Cat. That's interesting that you used to work at Rand McNally. Um, let's see. Um, in there, you want different types of contact sheets. You want a utility company contact sheet. Okay. And you want their address, your address, because if it's a babysitter or somebody that's there at your house, they need to have your exact address. Uh, their, their main office number for regular office hours, um, their outage emergency number, um, your username and password for their web address. So like instead of having um, the babysitter look at your main information, you may just want to have a separate sheet that's in there. It's like a babysitter cheat sheet with certain things in it that you just have printed out and you can just pull it out of your binder and sit it on the counter or the table or something. And it's strictly for the babysitter with allergies, bedtimes, all of that kind of stuff. Plus emergency numbers, both emergency and non-emergency, uh, poison control, all of those things. You can the have address. that on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All on one sheet. That way, if they have to call emergency, they can give, confirm your address uh, to where they're needing to come to, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And you also need an emergency contact information sheet for both emergency and non-emergency personnel, police, ambulance, fire, sheriffs, physicians, including specialists, ambulance, or sorry, I already did that one, dentists, eye doctors, veterinarians, and, and animal hospitals, okay? Um, so if you have pets or you have farm animals, you need to have all of that handy. Sandra said she doesn't need an emergency for her mind to go blank. Thank you, Alicat. Yeah, Sandra, I hear you, girl. Neither do I. Okay, you also need an emergency contact uh, information sheet for family and friends that you would need to get a hold of because if something happens to this, and you don't have them memorized, you need a way. Plus, for other people that might be in your home. Or if you're grabbing this binder and you do go unconscious, information's already in there for somebody to be able to find uh, how to get a hold of people. Okay. And I would list those in the order of who you would want to contact first for different, you know, for the, your situations. And that's smart to not count on your cell phone. Your cell phone could be broken. You may not have cell service. Let's say you fell and it broke and you've got a hard copy somewhere, you know, and you want a babysitter to know the physical address of your house, not it's right across from my Aunt Polly's. Everybody exactly. knows where that is. Yeah, because exactly. you're usually talking to a dispatcher yeah. in another area. Well, and me. also having it on a piece of paper is better because a lot of times, even if people know this stuff, when you're in an emergency your brain doesn't necessarily necessarily you, you have a you sometimes you lose your ability to think or think clearly mm -hmm. and recall things so that's just one less thing you have to worry about if you have it right there um mm -hmm. so you also want an emergency contact information sheet for school work child care providers or, or facilities and you can do babysitters and stuff like that as well, if needed, or alternative child care people, um, facilities, including their phone numbers and addresses, okay? Because say there's an emergency, you see, you see an emergency on TV. They're saying it's a child care provider's place, but they're not showing the exact location yet as far as video where you can see, but you have the address, you'll know whether it's your child's facility or not. Um, in larger cities, sometimes people don't think about stuff like that, but that would be very helpful. Um, hey, Josh, good to see you. And those of us Where's rural addresses, right? Like people who have a state highway, whatever. And because when you call that 911 number, you're getting somebody kind of far off. 
you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like for us, it's a sheriff's department and um, it's also good to have physical way to get there written down. Like yes. we're between two highways. So seven miles south of such and such or 10 miles east of such and such. And it's already written down. So your babysitter doesn't have to know north, south, east, west. You can just make sure and give them a physical direction, especially if yeah. the babysitter's like calling from their mobile phone, things like that. Yes. So um, anyway, also for visiting family and friends that might be coming to to spend time and maybe you've run to the store or something. You never know what could happen in that time. Hey, Fuzz. Good to see you. Okay. Um, password sheet. Um, with passwords for financial institutions, insurance companies, utilities, if not save up above with that other, on that other uh, sheet. Emails and social media, which may be used to communicate an emergency. We've used social media to communicate like for tornado warnings and stuff when mm -hmm. a cell line was down, for instance. Um, and it's a quick way to get a message out to a lot of people. So um, maybe you're logging in from a, a computer that's not yours or a phone that's not yours and you know you you've got all that saved or you have a sheet at home but um comes in handy if you actually have your it in your binder where you can grab it if you need to mm -hmm. um another thing would be hey digs good to see you another thing would be health history sheets for each family member including lists of previous surgeries allergies especially to medications and foods current med list special needs maybe blood type okay um and we already went through home inventory list including for outbuildings and if you have it's better to have those things separate like we have a barn it's a shop my husband's got his tools in there they're very expensive if they're all added up okay um, but, but, yeah, say a tornado yeah. comes through and it doesn't hit the house, but it hits the barn. We'll already have an inventory sheet of what's in there and yes. it's going to be able to just hand this over to the insurance company. You know, it'll make it mm -hmm. so much easier. You may want to include also photos of your, your property, including your buildings and, and a, possibly a video which you could do on a thumb drive along with all these other papers um, but i would still have a hard copy but you could also have a thumb drive that you've added with all this information but a little video to prove that it's really there and you're not just saying that that's what was in your barn so you can get a bunch of money right um it's a good way to cover that hey emma um let's see uh proof of residence uh, yes yeah, so my especially allergies i'm allergic to codeine does i get hives and i'm hyper now thankfully it doesn't make my tongue swell up or my airway close but all yeah. those are very important mm -hmm. yeah and just because it hasn't yet doesn't mean it wouldn't in the future because a lot of times it's precursed by more yes. minor al allergic reactions and every time you take it you can have a more serious reaction good hurt yeah The, the folder will mean nothing in a long term. No, but there but m more than likely the most of the emergencies, the emergencies we've dealt with in our lives thus far have been short term emergencies and an yes. immediate, immediate thing. So mm -hmm. um, it'll come in handy for for the most likely and more um, more logical things that are have come up in our lives thus far. Yeah. Um, like evacuating for a hurricane, right? Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you want to turn off your propane. Uh, Backwoods Law talked to us about that mm -hmm. on the fire, the two-part fire chat that was mm -hmm. epic. And mm -hmm. we will serve you at this point. If we come home and have damage, I want to be able to access quickly to make that insurance claim because it's going to take yeah. a hot minute to get it. Yeah. You know? But yeah, once the SHTF happens, we're not concerned about insurance, but we're certainly concerned about surviving, you know, right. and having a way to communicate and with you. still people. have your emergency plans in there, so that will come in handy yes. for, for um, 
certain certain instances of of that but yeah i mean this is mainly for everyday type of emergencies that happen and natural disasters and wildfires and you know tornadoes and things like that um illness all that kind of stuff this is the perfect one in the um side chat long-term disasters start with short-term disasters and Remember something, traumatic brain injuries are no joke. I could fall down the stairs. Having that stuff accessible makes a huge difference, mm -hmm. right? If you got to get a caregiver or someone to help you, you know, or a family member. So, yeah, I like that. Uh, Long-term disasters short, start with short-term disasters. Yeah, it does. Okay, um, you need proof of residence. We've talked about this before. Friends of mine had their home hit with a tornado. Uh, well, a whole community was hit with a tornado in a town not too terribly far from here, Elk City, Oklahoma, and um, including one of the girls that I graduated from high school with, and they weren't allowed back in their uh, neighborhood until they showed proof of residence, at least two forms of that. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's true, Fuzz. Mm -hmm. But it's always good to have a backup. Okay. You also need copies of your pet records, including their VAX records. Like, you may want to add worming. You, you definitely want their weight, their med list that they take, their allergies, and current photos of your pets. Because if they get lost, you also have a current photo in there. You don't have to try to search through a bunch of stuff to try to find a good photo for identification in case they are lost, okay? Um, and if they do need meds and they need it quickly, you want to be able to get a weight as quickly as possible. Um, and so weighing them regularly is, is a good idea. Okay. Now there's a lot of other stuff here. Um, this is a long list on this. Okay, so you're going to want your important documents related to you and, and your family. Copies of military, like service records, okay? Social security cards, birth certificates, death certificates, yes. marriage licenses, divorce certificates. Um, you're going to want health records on each of the people in your family, lease agreements, okay? Um, mortgages, like and if, if it was paid off, right? You want the title Locker. to your titles to your to your home your vehicles including your your farm equipment um insurance cards for health and auto wills power of attorneys dnrs life insurance papers home insurance papers including rental insurance vehicle tag numbers vin numbers okay if something's stolen you want to have that right away you don't have to go digging for it Mm -hmm. um, including your farm equipment. Photos of all those uh, things will be helpful, especially any like distinctive marks that they might have. If something's stolen, you want to get to it right away. Hi, Sida. Good to see you. Did I miss anybody else coming in? Christ, is the answer Sita? You said that. Okay. Yep. I missed mm -hmm. the Sita part. <laughs> hey, hey, dear. Let's see. Everything. A more of a certificate. <laughs> exactly, Diggs. A, a, a thumb drive is a fast, quick way to have all of it, but I would have it in paper because what if for some reason that thumb drive quit working or was, ex you know, exposed? Like maybe there was some moisture in the air and it was enough to get in there and not make it work right, or you don't have access to a working computer um, yeah. in this situation. So, um, Anyway, let's see. Photos of all the both, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Like you want a backup for your backup, right? <laughs> That's yes. what preparedness is about. Um, concealed carry permits and licenses, adoption papers, custody papers, resumes. Okay, because if your house gets blown away and you're relocated, you're going to need that resume, aren't you? Yes, you are. Um, School transcripts and diplomas, certifications, like copies of those certificates or papers. 
copies of the front and back of your debit or credit cards. Let me Child say this on that. You think everybody who had to in Katrina, Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans, didn't wish to hell they had one of those they could grab when they had oh. to land at the, um, what, it's not the Superdome, whatever is in yeah. um, Astrodome. Uh, Texas. Yeah, Astrodome. Yeah, I think they didn't want that just to have it. And let me tell you, the people who made it through those FEMA lines at those tables were the people who would yell, I got to go bag with all my papers. And just what you said, the front and back. Yeah, of, the, of those things. Yeah, makes yep. a huge difference. Debit and credit cards, the front and back of those makes a difference because if for some reason your wallet's stolen, you need to have the number to call. You need to have all of the information so you can call right away and report it stolen, okay, or lost or whatever. Um, child safe kits, like they have their fingerprints, a current photo, current height and weight, maybe a hair sample in there. Um, although in, in speaking with it for the child safe kit for my, my granddaughter, they said it really, I don't know how it wouldn't be that beneficial to have a hair sample with the roots intact. Oh, I, I would, agree. I think it'd be better to have it not, than not have it. Yes. A couple of months worth of recent bank account statements, savings, retirement accounts, stocks, mm -hmm. bonds, etc. Right. Um, and then all of those things can be, like we said, added, um, added onto a thumb drive as well. And you can put that in a little vinyl pencil pouch that has the three little holes in it to clip into your binder. Yes. And in that, I would also add some cash, like some small bills and some quarters in case you have to do your laundry, a laundromat or something. Like there were a lot of people that were, that only had a few things and yep. they needed to be able to do their laundry and having some coins for things like that or turnpikes, change for mm -hmm. turnpikes and things like that come in handy. In that zipper, you can also put in that zipper pouch spare keys for all vehicles, houses, outbuildings, and storage units. And utility keys such as a Silcock key in case um, you're in need of turning off uh, water or if you need to access water if you're out like in a in a in an urban area and you need to access water so that is my list tell me what you think is there something that i missed i'm sure there is a lot i've missed um but through my research it's kind of um some of the things i've come to now as far as finding sheets to go to fill out just kind of pre-made sheets <clears throat> There's a lot online that's free. Um, you can find free stuff online, free printable um, contact, um, like contact sheets or, you know, emergency contact information or password sheet or whatever. Um, you can find all of that. I did put three links in the description of this video for three different places. I think one or two of them is uh, they charge and the other one's free on some free oh. printables. But I know there's a lot more websites that you can find free printables on. Um, I didn't spend a ton of time on it. Um, but one of them was a set of like seven sheets and it was like $7. So it was a buck a sheet. Wow. Saves you a lot of time of having to create it yourself. But of course, yeah. you can write it down, you know, like your passwords, your contact information and all of that stuff. You can just write it down on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. um, backwards exactly makes backwards. backwards. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, speaking of that, you may want, especially if you've got kids that are maybe maybe you've got a teenager that's babysitting and they're not as versed in first aid things like that you may want first aid a little first aid card in there to show how to take care of you know show them where that's at um or you can pull it out with their cheat sheet and have it all together and all of that so you know to me um, that's one of the things, I mean, and you've got, you know, a lot of people have what the, is called a control journal, 
like this, mm -hmm. which is basically household management. But you can do a full section. You can do a full section that's just emergency and put it in the same thing if you want. And that mm -hmm. way everything comes with you because, you know, you may want to keep a current, um, maybe a calendar in there and um, yes. current copy of um, like what your, your family's schedule is or something like that. Because say there is a major thing that happens and maybe you need to, maybe there was a death in the family or something and you need to mm -hmm. contact the, their coaches or whoever it is. All of that will be right there. You'll know, okay, you don't have to think about what you're missing. You can contact those people that were expecting you or whatever. But, you know, I mean, you can use your imagination and add as much as you want and make it as complicated as you want. But the deal is you have to have something. You need to have something to be sure. Now, I don't, I have some of that stuff in this binder. And I bought a kit, and for some reason, I'm not finding it. And I haven't filled those out yet, because I have most of this already in my home control binder. But, right. but, and I also have all those important papers already right here. And see, I could just make a small binder with, with the rest of the stuff that I'm missing and add it right inside here, and it's already ready to grab and go grab and go um mm -hmm. you may want to think about having a bag nearby that you can put it in yes gil i agree yeah you, you may want having it in separate binders but a lot of it will be a repeat of the information and just what tasha was saying using your imagination let's say that uh Vern goes in the hospital or on the way there find out he died right? I have a girlfriend who knows who you need to call right now, because if you think you're going to be thinking as that surviving spouse, you're, you're going to have to be drug or pushed around, right? So are all of our originals, marriage license, those things are in a fireproof safe. You know, I mean, it's anchored into the joist in your house, mm -hmm. right? And it's not, you know, your fire, hopefully, you know, I don't have propane or something in there. It's going to make it melt. Yeah. But then the copies are in our bug out bags, right? If we got to get out now because we don't want the FEMA truck to come get yeah. us and drag us out. Those are copies. A lot of them you need the copy on the back for the certified number, like a marriage license. But right. yeah, it's a lot of redundant things. But ours is we each have an envelope in our safe that says, in the event of my unfortunate demise. Right. right? Vern doesn't log into... Um, YouTube or go on to a lot of the things I go on to. Right. And then he needs to have access for me because he changes his password for the investment account that he manages for us mm -hmm. to live on dividends. I need to have whatever that current password was there. Or if he dies, then I hand it to my friend who has a brain and will get us in it, change the password right? Or decide to move the money because I don't know if you know this, when your spouse dies, the IRS can and will freeze every single account you have. Yep. So my plan is write her a check. She goes and gets it out of either our savings account and just leave a hundred bucks in there or take it out of our check-in to have cash to function on because they can freeze your account for over yep. 12 months. Yeah. And that is is frightening. Uh, when my dad died, had the bank not called and I answered the phone and said, it's going to sound terrible. I need your mother here before 10 a.m. And we, I think we got there at 935 and guess who was walking in behind us? The local IRS representative to freeze those accounts. Wow. So let's just add that to being a widowed and now, now you can't write a check, you know, pick up mm. something. It's, yes, you know, people have prescriptions. So yeah, it's very, Hard copies are everything. Mm -hmm. Too many people count on everything on this dang phone. Well, when you lose it or you take a picture or a video, you know, and you want to show it to the police, they're taking your damn phone, people. They're not mm -hmm. letting you send it to them by email. They take it. It's now evidence. Now, imagine mm -hmm. being without your phone. Now, this mm -hmm. is my purse at the beach. It's got a driver's license and a debit card in it and, you know, a hundred bucks of cash if I need it. 
right? That's all that's in it. There's nothing else. Mm -hmm. Chapstick is always in my car. But yeah, yeah. You, you have to think, count on this too much. Now, yeah. a cop will let you pull over and actually look at your driver's license and your phone. But what if it ain't got a charge? What if the screen is cracked? Why put yourself in that position? You know, nothing else. Have a copy of your driver's license. So, yeah. And uh, Hugo Homestead said something about the, um, the, like where you would meet. That's part of your disaster, family disaster plans. And um, mm -hmm. that was like the third or fourth thing that I'd mentioned. Um, in your family disaster plans, that's where you would have your meeting places and all of that. So, yeah. and, and separate binders are fine. The only reason why I, I would suggest one large binder is because it's quick to just grab it and get out. You're not having oh, to, yes. um, and, and all of that information is right there and you're not having to copy mm -hmm. it a million times for different binders if it's the same information, but mm -hmm. like, um, you know, it just kind of depends on your situation. You can put tabs in there and different things to help separate the sections if you need to. Um, no, I but, love your grab and go with that bag that you have it in. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, I love I love my bag. Um, and it yeah. it's it allows like it's not waterproof, but it's water resistant and it's yes. fire resistant. Mm -hmm. Um so it does allow some time to get, you know, from point A to point B. So mm -hmm. and it gives you a feeling of security because I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. I don't live there. Katrina said it all. People, right, waiting their way into the Superdome, waiting for days to get on a bus. And then you get there, right, to, would you say it was the Astrodome? And they're waiting. And then four days later, FEMA comes and you have nothing. That was so freaking ignorant. You know what I mean? Just, it's just insane. And like you were saying, and they didn't have a dollar. They mm -hmm. didn't have any cash on them. They had to wait to get that money, the little visa cards from FEMA. And just imagine if you could sit down, but anybody who had those, it could be a simple Ziploc bag. And remember there were some banks there and some loan companies that were only there. They weren't national, right? It's not like there was an 800 number they could call. People struggled to prove that they owned a piece of property because the houses were gone on them. Gone, yeah. right? Floated down the road with 15 other ones. So. And that's where even just having the copies helped them. Just imagine sitting there and not even be able to have a visa card, anything, get yourself even a cheap hotel room just to calm yourself down. But the fact that you chose not to evacuate, found yourself in a bad situation, a simple go bag like Tasha had would have helped him. Really yeah. Hi, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Having something like, I like this because I can just grab it and get down in. And and yeah, Gil's right. I mean, you can do it in separate binders. It's whatever you feel is best for you and your family and whatever yes. you prefer. You know, mm -hmm. that's the thing. It's it's your it's your family. It's your home. Do it the way you would like, you know. Yeah. Um, and scenarios you, for your area. Yeah. yeah like hurricanes, yeah. tornadoes, flooding. Mm hmm. Yes, Alley Cats. That was a failure in every way it could fail. That is the picture yeah. of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I agree, Fuzz. I think that whoever's in charge of the finances, the other one needs to know how to do that as well, how to access all that information. Excuse me, all that stuff, because if something suddenly happens, hey, Court, if something suddenly happens, I mean, to the one that that takes care of all of that mm -hmm. you know bills still got to get paid things still need to be done yes i'll tell so, you what when you're old like me and you help people get a divorce and fuzzy just mentioned it, it makes him mad when men won't explain to women or show them how to pay bills right where important papers are but what i point out is and she didn't ask and she didn't insist on knowing right because it's not yeah. like she's some weak little flower now if he won't tell you you got a problem so every time there's a divorce, it's, I know we have two savings accounts and he's got his 401k through work. Okay. That's irrelevant. You can't get that. That's working in his name. And then we have our checking account. And when I have to go over there and dig through the papers and stuff, there ain't no savings account. There's no, no hard copy of it. Cause if there is one, it's in his name. 
or his dad's name or somewhere else. It's how they hide money. Mm. You know what I mean? Women can sit down. I mean, for God's sake, it's basic math, you know, yeah. trying to figure out this is what his check is and stuff like that. So women have to do a little investigating. I don't have a whole lot of mercy for women who don't insist because they leave to go to work or go to a bar and you go digging through stuff. And if you can't figure out a knuckle dragon man's password, I mean, seriously. Okay. Really? You know, it's, it's going to be basic things. So nothing else, you know, you get your little password buster and figure it out. But if you can't trust them, don't stay with them. How about that? Mm. Yep. Yeah. They become volumes. Yeah. Dig. Yeah. Yep. That's just, that's how I feel. Um, you know, I have, I'm surrounded by friends and family that like, they don't want their spouse to go out like, um, like on a man's trip or a woman's trip somewhere. Yep. They don't want them to just go have a cup of coffee at their buddy's house or whatever. It's like, and, and they can't do it without calling like the, right. the, the, the spouse or girlfriend or boyfriend calling every few minutes more yeah. mostly it's the girl but sometimes yeah. it's the guy too and i'm just like go ahead and go babe <laughs> bye see you later if i if i literally was living in fear all the time that he was cheating on me i just wouldn't be with him i couldn't thank you why and you gotta sleep with these people they can chop you up with an axe you know what i mean yeah i like hillbilly i'm like bye have fun yeah you can come back tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> Please go. You're in my way. Right. Get out of here for a yeah. while. <laughs> How about when you're with somebody and you say, if you answer the phone again, we've been together 35 minutes and your husband's called three times. Seriously, why Why are we even here? Well, he gets mad if I don't answer. Well, then why are we here? It's the last time I'm doing that. It's one thing if somebody, yeah, and you can text and say, just making sure you made it alive. You know, yeah. I live on a two way highway, people with deer, but we're not on leash. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, Gil, but you're a smart character, right? Yeah. I could never figure out Vern's, okay, that he protects <laughs> the investment account with, right? Okay. So when you've, when you've had high security clearance, it's not like, you know, banana pepper too, you know, but the average bear, the average, the average man, it is not that hard, you know? So it's, it's I'm telling you, it's scary times, but yeah, you, you shouldn't have to dig for things, but in the event, in the event of our unfortunate divide, demise, you know, people don't need to know how to do it because yeah. just don't hide things from each other. You know, they can come back. A lot of people die and they found out, you know, the wife withdrew from her 401k. She had an online gambling habit. Every three months, they let's sit down and go over their times. You may pull out of a 401k, right? Mm. New house, emergency, but you both need to know that not when they die and you find out we don't have 800,000 in there. Yeah, And now you have a man with two small children with a decent pay a job, mm -hmm. but there's not that. And that's yeah. just devastating. Now you're dealing with the death of children and you're broke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Gil, I would love if you, if you saw anything I missed, let, let us know. I want to know. Cause uh, like you were trained in this stuff. So <laughs> if anybody would notice what I missed, you would. Anybody else as well? If I've missed something, let me know. And if somebody wants me to email this sheet, these papers to them, this list, I'm more than happy to just email me and let me know you want the emergency binder list or just binder list or something. And, and I will um, email it to you. Um, it could be things you didn't think of. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much. Um, we oh, don't yeah. bank on we don't bank online and do that sort of thing. If you do, you need to know those passwords. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to check that the bills are being paid on time because the IRS ain't got no problem freezing that either. That's mm -hmm. your, that's your checking account. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So and, anyway. and also, you know, maybe, um, say my husband, you know, we had a business account, right? And my husband's the one that opened that account. And I'm just a, I'm just a signer on that account, but it's not my account. If something happens to him, that's immediately frozen. Like I, I couldn't take any money out of that. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's always best to, for both people to know. And same with your emergency plan, 
you know, you may have a spouse that just sits there and rolls their eyes, but yeah. just be like, listen, just humor me. Just sit through <laughs> this. We'll go through it real quick and you'll know where it's at and then we'll have it. And maybe we'll just review it once a year or something. Yes. Just humor me. Mm hmm. If not, you got to have something in a safe that is like written for a knuckle dragger. The first thing you need to do is call your mama and let her <laughs> handle all these things on here. But yeah, if they're not gonna, if they're not interested in knowing it, you still have to provide that information. If you have children with them, I mean, even though they're refusing to accept it, you don't want them suffering when you're gone and they can't buy a hamburger. You know what I mean? Well, Kaylin, it's still property. And until some, you know, whoever is claiming it, you know, IRS can still freeze yes. your stuff if you have an account. Um, yep. They can seize or seize your stuff, too, if they want to. But you don't pay taxes, so there probably wouldn't be any reason for that. But. <laughs> okay, Fuzzy, if you find the other spouse dead before calling anyone, remove all the money, then report. Now, see, Fuzzy doesn't want to be left broke. Right. So because you might need to swing into a McDonald's, get some gas for the tractor. I the, feel only what problem, you're saying. the only problem is if the spouse died from somebody doing something to them and it wasn't you and you go to yes. take all the money out of the account Suspect. and they can tell proof of time, you know, when when that death occurred or even if it was right before their death occurred. Right. You're going to be numero uno on their suspect list and it's going to make you look even more. So you're, you're already going to be because the spouse always is or the well, whoever significant other. Yeah. They won't even look at anybody else. It's so pitiful. Right. Yeah. But yeah there are a lot. I would can't imagine living with somebody that scared me, you know, yeah. exactly. I mean, I understand domestic yep. violence and where it comes from, but women, can still dig in there to find, especially if they have kids with them. Oh, I missed something, Suburban. What was that? Aw, happy birthday to your child. They're always your babies. It don't matter how old they get. They're yep. always your babies. They're still a little bitty. But yeah, just have, just everybody have some sense. Like we had to know, if you live in New Orleans, it's a bowl. It's always been a bowl, right? So if you're way over at elementary school, we had to have a place that we knew to run to, right? Not to a person's house, right? To where high ground is. Just like you see the flooding in Houston and part of I-10 is, is raised up. All the lower parts are down there. You can still get to those high parts. You know what I mean? So we had to know those. Then it was up to us to, us to stay there or to keep moving up to high ground if we lost that one. And then guess what? One of our parents is coming, our uncle's coming. Somebody's coming in a P-Rogue a boat, you know, you didn't have big kayaks back then, but that was our job just to get there and stay there. And if the cops told us we needed to go somewhere else or they want to put us in a bus, our job was to run. There's still woods, you know, catch yeah. us if you can't because our, our adult is coming, you know? <clears throat> All right. So um, just to go over some stuff next week, we are having Bland's Promised Land Ranch on. Uh, next Wednesday as as our special guest to discuss with us a little bit about their channel and then homesteading and prepping and how they correlate. And then the week after, um, we are going to have Trish and Dudley Wiley from Wiley Living on. And then the week after that, which is the 24th, which is the weekend before Thanksgiving, for those that celebrate the week before Thanksgiving, we will not have a show on the 24th of this month, the day before Thanksgiving. So that will give people that celebrate time to do all of their cooking and all of that stuff and traveling and things like that. And we just don't feel like seeing y'all then. That's the bottom line. Yeah, yeah. We're just sick of you. <laughs> Not coming, just suck it up. We're not going to be there. Nope, mm -mm, nope. <laughs> ASOP. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're we're just gonna um take that day off and you know let it be for family time. Hey, um, uh, P2E, we have somebody else that lost all of their preps in a divorce, so we understand. Um, but you know, it's cool, he is doing it. Right. He is right. rebuilding, you know, remodeling where he found to live, has a great 
it's got a great add on to it that was like perfect for his tools and stuff you know usually just get a place you ain't got to outbuild him you ain't got nothing but he's doing it you have to get over the shock and awe in first and then you just keep on right like yep. i don't even know if i'd give Vern any empty cannon jars he knows how to can he'll watch my canner i mean you know what i mean he buys the stuff to put in it, but I might be, might be like, I get possession of all the can of jars. <laughs> or I'll give him some, but no lids. Okay. No lids. I'll give him the ones with chips. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, P2E, prepping to endure. For those, now you understand what the P2E stands for if you don't know their channel. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's tough. It's tough when you have to rebuild but you've mm -hmm. done it before and you can do it again. Um, it's no, it's no different than doing it. You know how people say, Tasha, why are you even canning and doing stuff when you live in a tornado zone or I'm in a hurricane zone? Because a hurricane and tornado don't come by every day. Yeah, You're, and it's other, not the only thing that you got to prepare for. Thank you. Yes, so <laughs> let's hope that, I mean, if a hurricane came and I lost them all, guess what? I could probably still find out in my yard after that water recedes some sealed jars. You know what yeah. I mean? But it's, if you don't have them, that's like saying, well, what if my house caught on fire? Well, yeah, same thing. You know, so it's it's not any different than rebuilding after that and they're doing it. Mm -hmm. All right. Alley Cat wants to know, when when are we going to have another pain support group uh, meeting? Um, we are going to do that. And from now on, they will be private. Um, in, in a few months, I'll do another um poll and see if we still stay in the same way but for now they'll be private and so those that are interested either being on the panel or being in the side chat i need you to email me um and i'll give you that email in just a minute but um i'm doing the prep for it food challenge um as you saw with that let me see where i had that yeah, it's up there. <laughs> it's just hashtag prep for it food challenge, having the four in there, not the word for. Um, and so those that do um, the food challenge, go ahead and um, make sure in the description, not in the title, but in the description, you put hashtag prep for it food challenge. And that way I can find your video easily. Um, there's already been three people submit their videos um, and that will take place the Sunday before on our decompression time. The, th the Sunday before Thanksgiving, let me tell you the date on that, which is the 21st, uh, Sunday the 21st on our decompression time. We will, um, thank you, Kaylin. We will announce the winners. Okay, I have and to make a little firing sound. Slow your roll, sister. Rear, rear, rear. Okay. I watched Backwood Law's video. Uh -huh. But what is the prep challenge? How do I not know about this? Uh, it's a food challenge. And it's basically, it's my prep for it food challenge. And basically, all you got to do is try to make a meal out of shelf stable foods that are oh. and you, you want you want meals that are either between zero and five dollars or five to ten dollars oh. and uh, and uh backwoods law has agreed to donate either um he does leather work so an either a knife sheath now we're not talking like a katana or something but a knife sheath or coasters um that he will make and then um, Sandra Moody is donating um, a can of freeze-dried Thrive Life chicken. Get out of town. Mm -mm. And I've got some essential oils um, that are here, like lemon essential oils and stuff like that. So we'll have several prizes. And probably what I'll do is first, second, third prize and let the first place winner choose their prize and same for, and then the second place can choose from the remaining and then third place will get what's what's uh remaining so anyway all you got to do is make a video showing me how you're you make a meal out of um shelf stable food stuff that's accessible to everybody like you can have home canned beef or whatever but we have to know like 
if we access it in the store, like canned meat or yeah. whatever, around Chicken. how much it would be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, yeah. Shelf that stabber. brings me to another thing in the binder. Remember, in my binder, I have recipes that I can use my canned goods, my Thrive, Augustine Farm, dehydrated stuff that I dehydrate myself because I don't want to waste anything you know, that's in there and go, oh, I didn't really need to add the carrots to that. Yeah. So that is another thing for a binder of power loss or uh, let's just say 2020 where we didn't want to go to the grocery for 14 days that I could make good meals and actually have a binder that had the recipes in them, right? So say I didn't have, I ran out of sour cream the second week that I could use my Thrive sour cream. So I didn't want to be trying to invent or try recipes with my stored food. I wanted trusted recipes that would be good. Yeah. Because remember, it went on hella long, right? Because then we we did go to the store. There was the supply chain issue in the meantime. So it, it went on much, much longer than 14 days. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, quick, quick access. And... Um, so anyway, yeah, um, get that done. You need to have that out the Saturday, uh, done by the Saturday before. So um, the day before so that I can go through all the videos and um, kind of see where I'm at on that. And then also um, the pain deal is going to be on Sundays, every Sunday, 4 Central, 5 Eastern on my channel. And... And if you haven't emailed me that you want to attend that, please email me at at this oops, wrong one. Sorry, I don't know why I put Yahoo. It's not that one. And I can't delete the comment, so. Call me crazy at gmail.com. Why isn't it showing it? Is it showing it over there on the side? Maybe it is. There it is. Okay. So email me there and just put in the, the description of the email description. You're going to type in pain chat or pain clinic or just pain, something like that. And then whether you want the internal link, which would be up on the panel with mouse, like, like mouse and I are, or on the external where you're on the side chat. Okay. So do that because they're private. So if you're, if you didn't email me and you're wanting to attend, you're, if you don't email me, I can't send you a link to it. Oh no, P2E, you, you don't have any content, huh? <clears throat> So email me on that. And then decompression time will be right after that. We, we, we leave those at about 50, 55 minutes. And that way we have about five minutes to start our decompression time on Sundays, which is right after that. Um, and we, we do that right at an hour. Um, just some time to laugh and be silly and have some fun. Talk about whatever we feel like talking about at the time. So I hope to see you all then. You see Kaylin's question, uh, Tasha. If you're going to camp, I hope she has a wonderful time. Would she miss the deadline if she did a food food vid? Because Diggs gave her the idea to do an MRE casserole. See? Oh, um, if as long as it's before the Saturday before Thanksgiving, like by eight o'clock at night, Central, nine Eastern, um. Because so all all entries need to be in by the twenty seventh by eight p.m. Central nine p.m. Eastern. So as long as the okay. entries are in by then, we're good. And P two E, why did you take down your darn channel content again when your channel content was good and I can't find the link to your dang channel? Arr. Right, Yossi, and thank you for being on the panel last last week. That was very good. Um, I, it was a good chat. I think it's very important that we're here to support each other and um, lift each other up. And we're all having tough days and to let everybody know that you're not alone.
So yes. Well, we're right at an hour. I thank y'all so much for watching. If there's anything that any of you uh, can think of that I left out of this list, please let me know because I want to make sure it's in my list. And um, I want to be able to have the opportunity to um, add that to the list if needed. And again, if you want that list, it's callmecrazy at gmail dot com without the a's in it so c l l m e c r z y at gmail dot com and just put on their binder list and i'll know to email one to you and it may be tomorrow before i get them all sent out um but i will get it to you and that way you can work on making your own emergency preparedness binder get thanks so much one. for watching do what Get you one, I said. <laughs> yeah, get, get going on it, people. Come on get, now. Need that information. Get her done. Get her done. Thanks, Fuzz. And thanks for coming by. Thank you all so much for watching. I love you. God bless. Thank you, Mouse Toes, once again, y'all. If you haven't subbed to her, it should be on the pin message that I had at the top of the the page over there. You need to. Click on her link and get her subbed up and the bell rung because the woman knows what she's talking about. All right. And thanks so much for watching. God bless. And remember to prep for it. Prep for it all. Bye, guys. <laughs>